Malina Abdullah. Um, I'm an organizer with Black Lives Matter. And we're here at day 13 of Decolonize LA City Hall. So we have been in front of LA City Hall for 13 days straight, 24 seven, sleeping here. We pitch tents at night and um, you know, wake up in the morning here. We're woken up bright and early by <laughs> LAPD at 6 a.m. Um, when we have to break down our tents. And we're here because um, LAPD continues to kill our people. Um, so LAPD has killed more of its people, more of its residents than any other law enforcement unit in the country. Um, and that's three years running. Um, we're here because we're, we're voice for the voiceless. Um, as you can see, we have all these families with us. And um, I can imagine letting them walk alone in this fight. You know what I mean? So. We've been here for 13 days. We've been camping out day and night. Ever since the decision for Riddell Jones has come back, and found they found those police in policy. So we've decided that something needs to happen. The system is broken. There is institutionalized and systemic murder of black people. And when you see a hashtag or you see a social media fight, it's one thing. But when you see the mother, the grandmother, the father, the cousin, the brother of the people who have been slain by the police, it's undeniable. I miss him. There's a hole that I need to be repaired. And I think I could feel better knowing that I'm standing here for justice right now. I want justice. I want accountability. I want transparency. I want changes made. Nobody should have to go through this. I can't imagine what it would mean if uh, my life were taken and my children were left without their mother. People should not die at the hands of officers if they are unarmed and not presenting a threat. Chief Beck said he have witnesses. I have witnesses. When they come and said they saw my grandson son, clearly executed by a Los Angeles Police Department, I want Chief Beck to prove them wrong. They said that the killing of Riddell Jones was in policy, that the officers that killed Riddell Jones were in policy in all of their actions and operations. And that is what called for this particular occupation of this space. Um, we're here demanding that the chief of police, who continues to condone this kind of behavior by his officers, we're demanding that he be fired. So we're hashtagging fire back, we're pressuring. The reason we're at City Hall is the mayor appointed him and has the power to have him removed. Um, and so we're asking Eric Garcetti to fire the police chief, fire Charlie Beck. So we're struggling for justice, but remembering that our struggle for justice is rooted in fierce, um, unswerving love for our people. And so we gotta give them as much love as possible. Black Lives Matter was born, I wasn't prepared for what it would become. And I still am not always prepared when we think about this encampment. Um, we call ourselves a womanist black nationalist organization with a queer and trans lens. So we're very conscious of the power and spirit of women in the space, of women as being the founders of the movement, as women being those who drive it forward, of course in partnership with men, but being really rooted in the tradition of Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth and Ida B. Wells and Ella Baker and practicing um, principles that are womanist. So this idea of group-centered leadership, we try to make all of our decisions by consensus, we try to get buy-in and sometimes there's a struggle with that, but we think that it makes for a more sustainable movement. We just passed our three-year anniversary for Black Lives Matter and I think that it marks the sustainability, it notes the sustainability of what we're doing. Um, there's normally children in this space, um, so that also is, I guess, feminine energy, if not feminine wisdom, to make sure that the space is always open. We constantly lift up that all black lives matter. So the other goal is to really build community here. It's really a beautiful, loving space, so we're kind of building the community that we want to live in. You know, the course of the day, there's usually a couple hundred people who cycle in and out. We've had tremendous support. We talk about winning the hearts and minds of the people, but we're bonding also as a collective.
We have white allies, we have Asian allies, Latino allies, indigenous folks coming down here and really supporting the work and being here and saying, you know, there's some stuff we gotta struggle through and we will do it together and we get free together. And so, you know, everybody's encouraged to join us for all of the work that we're doing. For this action, our goal is for Charlie Beck to go. So once the mayor fires Beck, we're gonna pack up, we're gonna go home, we're gonna continue to organize, but this action will be over as soon as Charlie Beck is gone. We all should be out here. We all should stay out here. We're not leaving until Chief Beck is fired. Um, and who are we to have these families fight alone? Like, who are we to say, hey, you have to fight against this whole system by yourselves? We're not going to allow that to happen. So we've all been out here. We're going to stay out here. And we're not going anywhere until Chief Beck is fired. That's why we're making shirts. Fire Beck. Can we get down on three? Fire Beck. Back. And that's real because we all family now, so if you mess with my family members, we coming after you back. <laughs>